So we are here for uh, basics of Azure. So first things first, the question is what exactly Azure is. A lot of people have heard of uh, that we have cloud and we, we talk about these days, a lot of different vendors which are into cloud computing. So Azure is one of them, of course, and it's, it's a part of Microsoft. So in order to go ahead and understand Azure, we need to go ahead and understand what all different clouds are there? How do we categorize these different clouds? And what all different services are there, right? So we'll start with the categories first. So as far as my cloud is concerned, cloud is categorized into three different things. One is IaaS, one is PaaS, and one is SaaS. So when we go ahead and talk about what exactly we have in the cloud. So the basics of cloud talks about having few hypervisors, which is the underlying layer of my cloud. And we have something called a cloud fabric. So this cloud fabric is the one which controls these hypervisors. And majorly it controls three different things. One, it controls compute, it controls network, and it controls storage, right? Now, let's just go ahead and try to understand IASPS and SAS. So this is my base of the cloud, first of all. So if I talk about Azure, so this is again, still the base of my cloud. Now on top of this, if I have a user, this user can go ahead and provision services, right? So let's talk about IaaS first. So the user will go ahead and provision a virtual machine and then user has full control on the VM, right? So the user can go on the VM, can install or configure a service. In my example, the user is configuring IaaS, so it's a web server. And then the user will go ahead and deploy his application app1 on this right now as user has access on the virtual machine user has access on the service which is deployed on the virtual machine and the application what we go ahead and deploy on top of this so this is my infrastructure as a service in this i am getting my vm as the base right so that's that's a part of my infrastructure now talking about the second service, which is my pass. So in case of pass, we again have a virtual machine. We have a service which is running on top of the virtual machine. And then you go ahead and deploy my application app1 here, right? So in case of pass, I do not have access on the VM. I have access on the service and I can deploy my application app1 in here, right? So this is my pass or platform as a service. So basically we are getting service and we are deploying my application on top of the service. So it's my platform as a service. The third thing what we talk about is SaaS. So in case of SaaS, again, we have a virtual machine. We have a service running on top of the virtual machine. And then I have my application app1. So in case of uh, SaaS, the user will not have access on the VM. The end user will not have access on the service. The user will access only application app1, right? So in other words, this, this, and this is accessible here. Only I have the service and application is accessible here. And in third case, only the application is accessible. So in first case, user pays for the virtual machine. Second case, user pays for the service. Third case, user pays for my application app1, which he or she is accessing, right? So any cloud service, whether it's Azure, whether it's AWS, or whether it's GCP has these three things what we talk about. Now talking about Azure, Azure has these virtual machines and we talk about using these past services with Azure, right? And then of course, as far as my SaaS services are concerned, there are a lot of other SaaS services what we have from Microsoft, what Microsoft offers, which is my application app1. Example I can give you is Office 365. Let me just see. 
So we have Office 365, which is my service. What we talk about is basically used for accessing the application directly, right? So this is what we talk about. Now let's just go ahead and try to understand few services in IAS, which Azure offers, and few services in PaaS, which Azure offers, right? So talking about the infrastructure part first. So the first very basic service what we talk about, which Microsoft offers is a virtual machine, of course, right? So when you talk about a VM, so I can use my virtual machine and I can go ahead and deploy my workload on top of the virtual machine. So in other words, if I wanna go ahead and deploy an application APP one, I can install the service and install this on a virtual machine. So virtual machine is not something which is new. We have been talking about virtual machines since long, right? So we had hypervisors previously. So we had VMware, we had Hyper-V, and then on top of that, we used to go ahead and create VMs, right? So in here also, the same concept applies. We have hypervisors as the underlying layer, like I talked about a few minutes ago. And then we have a virtual machine, which is running on top of this. Now this virtual machine can be used for any purpose, like I just said. So you can deploy your application, you can use it for testing, you can go ahead and deploy your, uh, let's say, um, applications which are running on the desktop. So you can also use this as a desktop uh, machine, right? So this is the core component. So when I talk about IAS in Azure, I talk about compute. And I talk about my VM. Apart from this also, there are a lot of other services what we talk about, but I will talk about just the virtual machine for time being because uh, in the interest of time, we don't have much uh, time to discuss on other services, right? So when we talk about compute, we talk about virtual machine. The second thing what we talk about when we talk about Azure and we talk about my network is my virtual network or my VNet. Right, so VNet is basically defined as the extension of your on-premises network into the cloud. So let's take an example. So in on-prem, we have switches, right? So this is how my switch looks like. And then you go ahead and connect your computers and you connect your machines, desktops on these switches. And then these two machines can talk to each other if they are on the same switch right? This is what happens in on-prem. Now in Azure, we talk about the same thing using VNet, right? So we have a virtual network. I have my virtual machines. I can connect my virtual machines to this virtual network. And then I can go ahead and uh, kind of communicate with these two virtual machines as we talk, right? Now, apart from this, the virtual network or the VNet can be used in a lot of different ways. It can be used to connect past services. So if you have a database service, which is running in Azure and you want this database service to be connected to this virtual machine. So you can go ahead and connect it with this and then this. This is called my endpoint. So this is my second use case of my VNet. The third use case is if you have an on-prem network and you have a virtual machine in here, or maybe any machine, not just VM, right? And you want this machine to be connected to this. So you can have a router or a switch in on-prem and you can connect it to VNet for connecting my on-prem VM to a VM in Azure, right? So this can be done using a site-to-site -site VPN. Right, so this is my second important core component when it comes to Azure. The third important core service, what we talk about when we talk about Azure is my storage. So we talk about my compute, we talk about my network, and now we talk about my storage. So as far as my storage is concerned, storage is of four different types in Azure. Let me just clean this up and then let's talk about storage. So storage is categorized into four different types. One is my blob. Then we have my files. Then we have my tables. 
and then we have my queues, right? So when you talk about, guys, please note down the questions. As I said in the beginning, I will not be able to answer any questions because I have to open the chat window again and again. So please make a note of the questions and we'll take the questions in the end, right? So coming back to storage, we have blob, files, tables, queues. So blob is further categorized into three parts. One is page blob. Then you have block blob. And then you have a pen blob. Now, as far as my page blob is concerned, this is used for storing virtual machines. So it is optimized for random read and write, right? Then when you talk about my block blob, so my block blob is used for storing content, right? And of course it stores the content in a block of 100 meg each. Now talking about append. So as far as my append blob is concerned, this append blob is used for append operations or maybe you can say logging. So it's used for storing logs. Now talking about files. So when you talk about my files, files are SMB, SMB 2.x and 3.x compatible storage. So this is my storage, which you can mount. And this is used for lift and shift. So when I say lift and shift, if you wanna go ahead and move files from on-prem to Azure, you will use files. Right. The third type of storage, what we have in Azure is my tables. So when you talk about my tables, it's my no SQL database, right? So it's like you have a structure and we have key value pairs. So the information is stored in key value pairs in my no SQL database. And this is what my tables do. Now talking about my queues, queues are the fourth type of storage what we have in Azure and they are used for inter application messages. So they're used for storing inter application messages, right? Now this is what my queues does. Now let me just go ahead and talk about creating few of these services and seeing. So we talked about three major services right now. The first thing we talked about is my virtual machine, which is a part of compute. The second thing we talked about is my network, which is my VNet. And the third thing what we talk about is my storage. So these are the basic services what we did talk about. So let's go ahead and provision few services and see how it works. And then we'll talk about a few more services and past services. So I'll go to my portal. And I need to type in my email and the password to log into the portal. So the first service, what we talk about is my virtual machine that comes on a compute, or maybe let's do the other way. Let's just go ahead and provision a VNet first, and then we'll go ahead and provision my storage, and then we'll go ahead and provision my network. I see few people say that they cannot sh see my uh, screen. I hope everybody is able to see my screen or no? Okay, let me just make few changes. Okay, now you can see, fine. So let's go to the virtual machine or, or let's say we go to the VNet first, like I said. So we will create a VNet and then we'll go ahead and create a storage account and then we'll create a virtual network. Oh, sorry, uh, a VM. So now first things first, when you talk about Azure, we talk about something called a resource group, right? We have not talked about resource group. So I was just trying to explain you these services and then we'll come to resource group concept. So for now, I will create a resource group with the name test RG 
And just to let you know, resource group is more like a logical entity wherein I can go ahead and uh, add all the resources. So it's, it's more like a group of resources, maybe you can say, right? And in Azure, everything is a resource. A virtual machine is a resource. A virtual network is a resource. Storage is a resource. IP address is a resource, right? So there are a few best practices using which we go ahead and create resource groups. So I don't want to talk about that right now. So I'll go ahead and create a resource group with the name test RG. And then this is my test virtual network. Okay. And I want to go ahead and save this in Southeast Asia. Or maybe I'll just save this in East US. Then it, it's asking me which all IP address ranges. I want to go ahead and specify. So I'll go with the default one for now. This is the default one, unless you want to go ahead and edit. So I'll just take a smaller range. I don't want to use so many IP addresses. Now within this address space, I have to specify the subnet. So this is for my prod environment. And then 10.0.0.0 slash 24. So I'll use all the addresses here. And then I click on add. I want to enable DDoS. Firewall, I don't want to enable. Tags, I don't want to configure. Review and create. So what I did is right now, I created a VNet. So this is my VNet, which I created. The range for this VNet is 10.0.0.0 slash 24. So this is one of the core services, what we talk about when we talk about Azure, right? Now let's go ahead and create a storage account. I'll just go ahead and create this. So this is my second core service, what we talk about, right? And then I'll come to my virtual machine. So it's provisioning my VNet. Okay, so now I have to go ahead and select the resource group. I will create the storage account in the same resource group, which I created before. And this is my storage account name. So the storage account name we will use is my, let's say my name. Anuj test storage account and the same location. And I will go with the default ones, default options. And I go ahead and create this. So I created a VM. I created a storage account. Sorry, I created a VNet. I created a storage account. And now we will go ahead and create a VM. So virtual network is created. Let's check. So this is my VNet. Then we have my storage account. Let's check. So it's still not provisioned, that's provisioning. And in the meanwhile, I will go ahead and create a virtual machine. So when I create a virtual machine, I will use the same storage account and I will use the same VNet to store files and to connect to network. So I go to my virtual machine and let's go ahead and start provisioning this. So I need to go ahead and pick up an image of the operating system, which I want to go ahead and deploy. So I will put this in the same resource group again. So this is my test VM virtual machine. And I will put this in East US because all the other resources which I have provisioned are in East US. So I don't want to talk about redundancy because we are starting with the basics first. So I go with 2012 release two, which is my operating system, which I need to go ahead and select. So let's wait for this to read the information. And this is the size and I need to go ahead and specify my user ID and password. Now, as I need to go ahead and connect this machine from an external source so I can provision this. 
So I will use, uh, let's say, different set of IP addresses and different set of ports are required to be opened in order to go in and access this machine, right? So we'll talk about the IP addresses, private as well as other IP addresses, public IP addresses. But for now, we need to go ahead and make sure that this port is accessible because this is a Windows machine and my Windows machine can only be provisioned, sorry, only be connected using port 3389. So I go click on next. So I will use my SSD and I will encrypt this with a platform manage key and I click on next. Now you see this is the test VNet which we created in the last step. So I'm basically connecting my virtual machine to this VNet. Okay. And my virtual machine will get the IP address from this VNet. How the IP addressing works, we will talk about at a later time or maybe if we have time, we'll talk about that, that today. Otherwise we'll keep it for the next class or next session. So now this is the public IP address which will be assigned to my VM using which I will go ahead and connect. This is my network security group. So my network security group is the basic firewall what we talk about when we talk about Azure. So you can block ports, allow ports in here. Now these are my public inbound ports and I already selected 3389 in the previous step. I don't have a load balancer. So I'll go with the basics first. There's one more thing which I wanted to show you. Now, I wanna enable boot diagnostics and I wanna go ahead and dump the logs, the diagnostic logs for this virtual machine. And if you remember, I created this storage previously in the previous step. So it's able to go ahead and pick up the storage and save the information over there. Now, I don't wanna talk about identities and I don't wanna shut down this machine in the evening. And then I click on next click on next and click on next. So it will go ahead and do a validation and then I can go ahead and create a VM. So deploying a VM takes around five minutes or so. So we will move on and I don't want to wait on this, but the idea is to go ahead and <clears throat> provision a virtual machine provision a network and provision a storage. So these are the th three core services when we talk about Azure, right? And one more thing I wanted to show you, which I just talked about. When I go to storage and I go to storage account in here, which I provision, I have these four services. Containers are basically my blobs. File shares are basically my files. Tables are tables and queues are queues, right? So each and every service in here has a specific purpose. So this is SMB. This is for, uh, this is my NoSQL database. This is for my queues. Now talking about my containers, if I go to my containers, in a while, I should see a container in here which will put my diagnostic information, right? So these are my core services what we talk about when we talk about Azure. Now moving on with few past services. So I'll go back to my whiteboard and talk about few past services. So now when I talk about these past services, I will majorly define and discuss on two different past services. One is my app service, which is used for provisioning my websites, or let's say running my websites and web apps. The second thing what I would talk about is my SQL. So SQL is my SQL server, SQL server service on the cloud, right? 
So these are the two major PaaS services what we will talk about. Now when you talk about app services, app services can be used for a lot of different things. Number one, it can be used as a service wherein you will go ahead and deploy or host your websites. It can be used for hosting your APIs. It can be used for hosting your mobile apps backend. It can be used for hosting your web-based applications, right? So this is what my app services can do. Apart from this also, there are a lot of other different uh, use cases of app services, but I think for the beginning, we will talk just about this. Now, if you wanna go ahead and provision your app service, Microsoft gives you two options. One, they give you a container. Second, they give you a VM. So if it's a VM or a container, you get an option to choose Linux or Windows. Right, so you can choose between Linux and Windows. Now there are few stacks which run on Linux. There are few stacks which run on Windows, right? So for example, .NET works best on Windows and only works on Windows. And if you talk about Java, Java works best on Linux, right? And you can also use Dockers to go ahead and provision Docker images, which we will talk about in one of the other sessions and then deploy your application app1 or your website in here, right? So if I talk about running an application in this, you don't have access to the underlying layer, you just access to the service, and then you go ahead and deploy your application. So the difference between IAS and passes, like I provision a VM, now I can log into the VM and provision my application over there right as far as my app service is concerned i can go to my app service and then provision the service and then deploy my application over there right so let's just go ahead and see how my app services provision and how it works so you'll see and understand the difference between pass and ias and the services what we have in azure okay so i'm back on the portal and let's check in the meanwhile, my VM is ready. Yeah, my VM is ready. And if I wanna go ahead and run this or connect this, this is the public IP address. I can go ahead and connect this. And this is the private IP address, which I get to my VM. Now going to my app services and let's try to provision app service and see. So again, it's asking me which resource group you wanna go ahead and provision this. I will use the same resource group, which is my test RG. Then I have to give a name to my app service. So I have to go ahead and say, this is my Anuj test app service. And then like I said, we have two options. One to deploy a VM second to use a container and then I can use Linux or Windows. So if I go to code, I can select the stack. If I select ASP.NET, it selects Windows because my ASP runs on Windows. If I select, let's say Java, it selects Linux because it works on Linux. So let's go ahead and select this and select the location. So the location what I have is East US. One very important ground rule. All the resources which are in a specific resource group should follow the same location. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is if my resource group location is East US, so all the resources should be in East US, right? Now there's something called my app service plan. So in VM, we have CPU memory. In here, we have something called my app service plan. 
So app service plan decides how much CPU, how much memory and how many resources I get. So for example, if you want to go ahead and see, these are my plans, right? So we don't have CPU memory in here. We have something called ACUs. And of course we have memories. Now, if I want to go ahead and see which all features I get, I get features like custom domain. So if I want to go ahead and configure a custom domain with my past service, I can. If I want to go ahead and configure auto scaling, staging, backup, traffic manager, then you get ACUs, memory, storage. So you get 50 gigs of space with this. So all these things I get and I can configure and I can run as far as my app service is concerned. Now, if you want to go ahead and select another plan, let's say you have some premium plans and few isolated plans, you can go ahead and select those. So I will keep, uh, Selecting, I mean, I, I will have my S1 selected. So this is my basic plan. And I will go to my monitoring. Now, I don't wanna go ahead and set up monitoring right now because this is just a test. So I don't wanna show you uh, many things because we are starting with the basic part and I don't wanna confuse you guys. So I go with tags. I click on review and create. And I go ahead and create. So provisioning of a virtual machine took maybe five, seven minutes. This will take maybe a minute or so. The difference between this is deployment of this is much more faster. You have more options. You have more uh, kind of uh, flexibility. So this is made for developers. But when you talk about uh, my virtual machine, my virtual machine gives me more security, right? And then more control over my resources, what I have. This is more like a public service, a past service. Over there, that's something what we talk about, uh, infrastructure as a service, right? So this is my first thing, what I wanted to talk about as far as my pass is concerned. So you see, the resource is already deployed. And if I wanna go ahead and browse this, so my website is ready. And I can go ahead and connect this using different things. I can use different CI, CD, techniques like we talk about devops these days so we talk about continuous deployment ci cd so i talk about my azure repos github bitbucket local git so i can go ahead and connect this with this so there are a lot of things what you can do with this you can scale up scale down same for virtual machines also you can go ahead and scale up and scale down and you can scale vertically you can scale horizontally so there are a lot of options what we talk about as far as this is concerned the second pass service, which I wanted to talk about is my SQL. And I will once again, move back to my whiteboard. Now SQL is offered as a pass service and a lot of people call this DAAS, database as a service, right? But then again, it still falls under pass. Now, when you talk about SQL or when you talk about database as a service, the idea is that you get SQL as an instance on Azure and you can actually go ahead and use that as an instance. You don't need to go ahead and manage a server on which you have to go ahead and deploy your SQL, right? So you will use SQL as a service. So the idea is you have a VM on which Microsoft will go ahead and install SQL and they'll create a database on this and give you access on this, right? So they'll allocate your resources, dedicate your resources, and then you will go ahead and access this. SQL is available in two different ways. SQL is available as a logical server and SQL is available as an instance, which we'll talk about later. But for now, I'll just go ahead and provision SQL as a service and show you. And then we'll talk about a few more things. So first things first, we talked about infrastructure as a service, and I talked about three major components, core services, maybe you can say. So we talked about compute, we talked about network, we talked about my storage. In past, we talked about two major services again. We talked about app services, and we talked about SQL. So let me just go ahead and talk about how we provision SQL and what are the things you can do with that. Okay, so 
Now talking about MySQL, first things first, we have to go ahead and provision a logical server, like I said. Because you know, the idea is that my application connects to a server and then from there, the application will connect to a database. Microsoft also offers database as a service, right? But first of all, we'll just talk about the first service. So I go to all services and search for SQL. So I go and provision my SQL server. So I add a SQL server and I will select my same resource group. Okay, location, ID and the password. So this ID and the password will be used to go ahead and connect to my SQL from the application. So you know, it's like in on-prem also, we have a SQL server and we have an ID and a password for that. So we don't have many options. I go and set my firewall. I don't wanna do that right now few additional settings. I don't wanna go ahead and enable my advanced data security. Tags, I don't wanna configure. And then I can go ahead and click on create. So this creates my SQL server, but it does not create my database. And if you see, it says no additional charges. This is free. This is just a logical entity. The entity for which we pay is actually my database. Right, so I will go ahead and close this. And then we'll go to my SQL databases, but I think I need to wait for 10, 15 seconds because it's still provisioning my server. Without my server, I cannot provision a database in here. So I'll just wait for maybe 10, 15 seconds. Okay, it's ready now. Let's go ahead and provision a SQL server now. SQL database, not server. So this is my server I already provisioned and now I need to go ahead and create a database. So this is my test DB. And how much compute and storage I want. So I go ahead and click on configure database. And these are my plans, what I talk about. So I have different plans for basic, standard, and premium. And then I have plans for general purpose, hyperscale. So when you talk about SQL, my SQL works with something called database transaction unit or throughput unit, I would say, right? So the more the DDUs, the more better the performance. So DTU is more like a blend of CPU memory and IOPS. And this is my storage. So let's go ahead and uh, go with the default one, which is S0, 10 DTUs and 250 gigs of storage. Click on next. So I don't want to configure any network. Now I have options. I can go ahead and configure collation. So if somebody is working on databases, you know what collation is. So you can go ahead and create a sample database or a backup database. So I'll go ahead and create a sample database. Click on next, review and create, and I go ahead and create. So this is one way of provisioning my database as a service. The second way of provisioning my database as a service is using managed instance. So this also is a past service. So this is more like Microsoft manages the instance for you. Right, so this is pretty similar to the way we run these SQL instances in on-prem. So you can connect it to VNet. The other one, which I told you is more like a public service because it's a pass service. This is also a pass service, but it works differently, right? So again, so we talked about two pass services, major ones. One is SQL and one is app service. Now I go back to my whiteboard. Okay, now talking about few things related to pricing. So how much you pay 
for these services. So when you talk about IAS and PAS, so the price for this is always higher when you compare it with PAS. So this is higher, this is lower, right? And there is a new service which has come up, which is, I should not say Kubernetes, I should say containers. which falls somewhere between this, right? Now talking about how much you pay for each and every service, we did talk about three infrastructure as a service components and we did talk about two pass components. We did not talk about containers. We are running another webinar for containers in case somebody wants to go ahead and register that. So you can log on to our website and then uh, see the uh, dates and everything over there and then you can register. So going back to the pricing. So for opening my pricing, I again need to go back to my browser. So I will open my browser. And let's go to something called pricing calculator for Azure. Okay, so we talked about five different things, virtual machine, virtual network, storage, app services, and SQL, right? So all these things, or let's say prices for all these services, which we did talk about, you can get to know from here. So you can go to virtual machines and see the cost of VM from here. So you can basically select my region, you can select the operating system, you can select the type, you can select the tier and you can select the instance. So let's say I selected East US, right? So let's, let's try to see how much is the cost of a virtual machine which I selected. So this is OS only or SQL or BizTalk. So I choose OS. I have more options, I can select Linux and in Linux, I have more options. So for now, I select Windows. I select Standard, and let's go ahead and select the size. So if I'm not wrong, this is what I selected. Now I have few more options in here. So I wanna go ahead and pay for this as I go. So basically I pay for what I use, or maybe if I, plan to go ahead and use this machine for a period of one year or three years, I can go ahead and reserve it. With this, I get a huge discount. So if I go ahead and say that I will use this for three years, I just pay $52.66 for this. If I say I will pay or use this for one year, I pay $63, right? Now, if I already have a license, Windows license with me, so I can select this and I just pay $30, not even $30 I pay for this. Now talking about my hard drive. So let me just go back and say pay as you go because I did not select these options. So as far as my hard drive is concerned, I just added one premium hard drive and that was 128 gigs, right? So for this, I pay 121. Actually I pay $19.71 and total I pay 171, right? And there are a few more options, a few more things you can go ahead and choose from. So basically the idea is you can get the pricing details in here and you can see how much you have to go ahead and pay. Right? And this is all I wanted to discuss for the basics of Azure. So we did talk about three major services. We did talk about compute, we did talk about network, we did talk about storage, and we did talk about uh, app services, and we did talk about SQL.